Take it away. I actually had this photo of my professional photographer. You can tell that I look like I'm in like a like a fashion uh, catalog that that pose on the beach. It's great. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, my name's Ian. Uh, real quick education background on me. I am the poster child for changing the education system because I hated school. Hated so much. Uh, never got along with my teachers. My family never got along with teachers either. And uh, but I love learning. Love learning more than anything else. And that drove everybody crazy because they were like, this kid's so smart, why is he constantly failing? They knew I was smart enough to do the work, but I refused to do it because I, I hated it. And I hated the uh, the one size fits all kind of setup, right? And the teachers I had were definitely uh, from the old school, you know, of, of uh, cranking out batches of the same, like, like cookie, cookie, cookie cutter setup. So school didn't really work for me. And I ended up uh, actually dropping out of high school twice. Uh, I liked dropping out so much I went back and did it again. Um, <laughs> and uh, my, uh, when I dropped out, one of the things they made you do is you had to go around to all your teachers and get them to sign this form releasing you from your servitude. And uh, one of my teachers was so angry that I was doing this that he literally took the paper, pressed it against my forehead, and signed it across my face before letting me leave school. But it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, since then, I have uh, uh, had an art gallery, been in a rock band, uh, become a martial arts instructor, and now I'm traveling the world as a freelance programmer and uh, visiting Southeast Asia. I'm not saying that to show off. The reason I'm saying that is you can deviate from this traditional system and still have an amazing life, right? So if you're a parent and you're worried about your kid doing something different, your kid's gonna turn out great, right? He can still have an incredible life. He might even be more successful than if he's hammered into that system, right? If you're a kid now and you're worried about following the standard path because everyone's telling you you're never gonna get a good job or everything's gonna be awful, don't listen. You can have an amazing life. It's what you make, make of it. It's the choices you, you choose. Okay, so enough of the setup. What I'm really here to talk to you about is um, something that, that hooks into my specialty, and that is uh, the idea of using a blogging platform as a means to learn something, as a means to teach something, or as a means to run a project. Uh, so how many people here like to learn things? <laughs> awesome. How many people here teach things occasionally, or get put in the position of teaching things? Okay, good. And how many here <laughs> had to run a project? Okay, awesome. So you guys are in Targo? <laughs> Great. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can use a blogging platform to do all three of these things uh, and why it's, it's a great way to do that. Uh, anybody here have a blog? Okay. Anybody here just ever used a blogging software, even if you didn't stick with it, whether it was Blogger or WordPress? Okay, good. So you're semi-familiar with the format, and of course you've all read the blog. So uh, a blogging platform, WordPress is my specialty, but pretty much all of them will offer some variety of the features that I'm going to talk about. Um, it is an a amazing tool that goes far beyond just the magazine style format. So let's talk about using a, a blog as a learning tool for a moment. If there's a topic you want to learn, uh, adding in the, the tool of using a blog uh, can help you learn things faster, help you retain the information, and help you actually apply it, no matter what you're trying to learn. The benefit that is offered here is it becomes the role of an external brain, basically. Uh, we have amazing tools inside our heads, but they have so much to do all the time that they're not necessarily optimized for learning a particular thing, uh, maybe within the time frame or the setup that you have to learn it. So being able to use an external brain to complement that is wonderful. The way a blog platform can do this is uh, several, several aspects. Number one, you can use it sort of like a journal to keep a, a regular uh, tracking of what you're learning, of, the, of the, the items that you've learned about your new topic of interest, of your new subject, right? Every time you learn something new that you think is useful or worth coming back to, you can write yourself a little blog post about this. That way you have a reference material. Okay, so, so a sort of learning journal is one of the most basic ways you can use it, use this, but it goes beyond that. Anytime you're learning something new, you're going to come across materials that you find really useful, inspiring, uh, something you're going to want to re refer to later, right? Your blog can be a repository for that. 
so that it's all in one place. You're like, oh, where did I put that? Where did I put that tutorial that that guy wrote about how to do this? Oh, I've got that video embedded in my blog, and you just go watch it, right? Or where did I link to that that uh, article from that trade journal? That link is right inside my blog, and go look at it. So you can use it as a sort of a central uh, reference area for everything that you're learning, right? So as a uh, external brain, it's wonderful, okay? And even better, the, the best way to learn anything is to actually apply it, to, to make something or do something with the knowledge. And that, that's what really solidifies it. Uh, there's nothing scarier than, than just a brain full of theoretical knowledge, right? You wouldn't want a doctor that only had theoretical knowledge. You want a doctor that's actually performed that operation a hundred times, right? That applying it is what makes it real. So by using your blog, you can store, whether just for your own enjoyment or to share with others, the fruits of your learning, right? If you make a project, if you create something, it can go on there and you can always refer back to it or you can just use it as a, as a self-gratifying uh, example of the culmination of all your efforts. Does that make sense? Okay, excellent. Okay, so that's one way you can use it to learn. Now, what about if you're a teacher? How can you use a blog platform in order to teach a topic? This is actually one of the most exciting aspects. Uh, Anyone who's a teacher in here knows that you only get a certain amount of time with your students every week, right? And it's always not enough time. It always goes by so fast and you never get to cover everything you want to cover. The saddest thing is that so much of that time is consumed with little, little items, little tasks that have nothing at all to do with the teaching of that subject, right? It's all this sort of um, paperwork and bureaucracy and everything that goes along with running a class, right? And it eats up your time with your student. So that maybe, maybe if you're lucky, one third of that time actually gets dedicated to the teaching and the learning of that topic. But you can use a blog platform to uh, sort of outsource all that, all that sort of the fizzy work and, and whatever that goes into running a class and actually use your face time for teaching the topic. Now the way you can do that is um, by using the features that are built into many blog platforms. And that's, you have a central hub of information here. So if you need to uh, give out assignments, if you need to post information, if you need to uh, have materials that the students are going to need to refer to, right? If you want to uh, answer people's questions that may come up during the week without making them wait seven days to get back to you so that they can continue their learning without being stuck, this can all happen through the blog, through the online interface. It doesn't have to happen in the classroom, okay? Uh, anything uh, like, Maybe um, there's uh, some, some material that you think is really relevant to the topic you're teaching, but the kids need to look over it later on, it can be stored on the blog. But one of the most exciting things you could use it for, and I, I encourage you to do this, uh, if you, especially if you want to gain engagement with, with the students, is use that platform as a way to invite other experts in, and you interview them, or you post work that they've done on the site, right? So now, you're using this, this blogging tool as a way to bring in exciting experts in your field that can also uh, convey information to your students and that can inspire them. Even if they don't have the time to come to your class and meet the students, they'll have the time to do an interview with you or have the time to send you a video or to somehow supplement your thing because you have this, this online presence you know, and they want to be part of it. So uh, that's a really excellent way to use a blogging platform as a means to teach. But like I said, the best thing you can do is use it as a means to free up your actual face time and spend that time teaching, conveying the topic, and all the other little little uh, little tiny knives that, that that cut away the time. Shift that over onto the uh, the online platform and free up your face time. Now, thirdly, how would you use a blogging platform to run a project? All right. And when I say run a project, this can be a very broad definition. All right. Some people automatically think like a software development project or some sort of entrepreneurial project. But guess what? If your kid is in a musical play at school, that's a project, right? You're running that, okay? Any type of thing where you have to organize a group of people to have a outcome, whether it's uh, organizing a car wash, or a fundraiser, or uh, even a party, a, that's all a project. And you can use a blog to do this. Before I go any further, I wanna, wanna uh, just mention the, the, the fact that even though this is an online thing, you can password protect all the info so that only people 
who are involved in this can access it. So if you're concerned with the whole world being able to see everything here, that's not a problem. Every, every major blogging platform has a way for you to uh, make the content private so that only people who should be involved are involved. But uh, it also allows people to access this if you want. Okay, moving on. Running a project. Um, the, the, the main huge benefit that using a blogging platform offers uh, when running a project is the ability to uh, keep a feedback loop running and communication running with everyone who's involved. When I was a kid, if you had, had something that was going on, let's say it was a school play again, right? All the parents have to, to communicate by telephone, right? And if you've got 20 parents involved, it's a mess, right? Nobody's oh, using rotary phones, so it took forever to dial, right? And they weren't in our cars for our pockets. And we all had to chop down a tree every day and make fire. All right. So uh, with the, with the, the uh, blog platform and, of course, the ubiquity of, of smartphones and the internet, you can now tie everyone who's involved in the project into the thing so that they're always up to date on what's going on and they have no excuse if they don't know what's going on, right? And by using things like RSS feeds, is it, it, raise your hand if you don't know what an RSS feed is. It's okay. Okay. An RSS feed is basically a handy little thing that, that blogs do where when some new bit of information gets posted on the blog, it gets sent out to people who decided to subscribe to it. So if everyone in your project is subscribed to the blog, which they should be because they're part of the project, anytime you put something new on there, or anyone who's involved with something new, everyone will get the message, which is great. The other way you can use this to keep, keep uh, the project going is you can even divide up uh, the team into smaller groups, depending on what, what part of the project they're working on whether it was a play with set design, or handling uh, the refreshments, or the costumes, or whatever. Uh, and they can each get their own section of the site where they have their own communication page. And by using things like comment threads and forum setups, they can communicate with each other in a way that's documented and public to each other um, to keep the, the loop running, to keep the feedback going, to keep the, the project moving. So things don't get held up for two weeks because some two people weren't able to connect up. It's all happening in a central hub. And it's that central hub of information that makes it a valuable tool. So I hope uh, you'll get some, some good ideas from, from those things uh, as far as uh, those three, three ideas of learning, teaching, and uh, running a project. Has anybody here um, run into any problems learning something, teaching something, or running a project that they, that they think could have been solved if they had it? in a sort of online setting. Or have, maybe they haven't done that yet. Okay. Well, hopefully this is going to some food for thought. If you have any questions uh, about the, the details of this, I didn't want to bore you with lots of pictures of the WordPress user interface over and over and over again. Um, but I'm happy to talk with anybody who wants to know how they can take that for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.